Welcome to the world of Duel Monsters. Hey, what's up, Meta Fam? It's your main dude, Meta Bro Jake, and I have returned you guys on the channel, baby, to give you guys the updated huge deck profile for the June slash July 2022 format. You guys, this is post the ban list. This build is actually very similar to the one that I played out there at the San Diego Regionals a couple months back, you guys. But since the ban list happened, there's been a few minor tweaks in the deck, you guys. But I'm here to explain all that. I wanted to give a special shout out to everyone that's been commenting on the previous Toon Deck profile wanting to know an update about this deck. You guys, this one is just for you, man. This one is super epic, super fun. And man, this deck just gets it going, you guys. Check it out, baby. Woo! All right, you guys. So before we get into this amazing tune deck profile, you guys, definitely want to send a super special shout out to Pal Manga Mats for blessing us with these field centers, you guys. These awesome field centers. Uh, we got Eldritch the Golden Lord, and we got Ecclesia the Virtuous. You guys, definitely check out Pal Manga Mats for all of your custom field center tokens and play mats you guys they got it all right there at pal manga mats and as you guys can see the play mat we're going to be using today for our deck profile is a custom made super meta bro play mat exclusively from pal manga mats you guys so if you need anything custom like this be sure to check them out all their info is going to be right here on the screen you guys Woo! pal manga mats number one baby heck yeah i also want to throw a little disclaimer out there this deck is pretty expensive. You guys you already know the prices of all the tune stuff has gone way up. But also the added tech that I have in this deck is also a lot of money, you guys. So I apologize in advance. But at the same time, I hope you guys enjoy the deck. If you have the resources to build it, I highly recommend this, man. So let's go, baby. We're going to go into the monsters first. So first things first, you guys. We're going to start off with the three boss monster of the deck. Toon BLS and it's collector's rare form. Now you need this card at three, you guys. Um, it's pretty common now in these builds to run three, uh, two at the very least, but in my personal opinion, this card's definitely a three. If you open up with two, you contribute one to special it from your hand. And he's just the best Toon monster because he could either target one card on the field and banish it, or he could attack directly on the first turn. It's one or the other, you guys. So definitely run him at three, in my opinion. Next monsters we're going into, we got the two Toon Dark Magicians. Definitely got to run him at two. You don't want to see him at three, but he is also one of the very good cards of the deck that he lets you search out your Toon spells and traps. He also lets you special summon a Toon monster directly from the deck, ignoring summoning conditions by pitching off a Toon card in your hand. So he's very, very good. Also run two of the Red Eyes Toon Dragon. Another one that I personally like to run at two. I, I kind of think this is the perfect ratio for these two monsters here. You do not want to draw into two of them in your opening hand, you guys. It's an ultimate brick. But Red Eyes Toon Dragon's another great Toon monster that um, once per turn you could special summon one Toon monster from your hand, ignoring its summoning condition. So definitely want to see them in there, but just not all the time. At your choosing, I guess. The last Toon Monster we're playing is the one Toon Dark Magician Girl. Now, I've been contemplating on whether to cut this card or not, but she's actually been doing really good. And she's also one of the Toons that could attack on the first turn. So that's why I run her at one in this deck, just in case you got to go for that extra push, that extra 2K. You get her out to the field. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty nice. And then for the rest of my monsters, I run the Brave package, you guys. This is Brave Tunes, aka Adventure Tunes. Uh, I got the three Water Enchantress. You definitely got to abuse this while she's still at three because she's probably the number one target in the whole package to get limited or semi limited. So, as we have her right now, let's run her at three. She's really, really good. Her effect is she could um, banish herself from your hand in order to add the right of Armaseer from deck to, I mean, yeah, from deck to hand or from graveyard to hand. Either way. But also, she has a secondary effect where if you control an adventure token, you can special summon her from your hand. So, it just gets the whole engine going, you guys. She's very, very good. You want to see her in the graveyard to activate her effect to get that right. All right. And then I also run the one, Wandering Griffin, because that's your uh, negate right there. It shuffles itself back into the deck to negate as long as you control an adventure token. And also, the last card 
The last monster card that I'm playing in this deck is the one, Illegal Knight. You guys, now this card right here is straight broken. A lot of people do not play this card, but I'm opting to play them at one because you could target up to two cards on the field. You switch possession of Illegal Knight, and you could bounce those two cards back to your opponent's hand. So if for some reason you open up with like these three or a way to get to Enchantress plus these two or a way to get the Adventure Token plus these two, man, you just have like a lock on them. You got one negate plus two bounces, you guys, and it's just super, super nice. And it also works good with the um, with the equip spell, Draco back, you guys. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the spells. But these are the last of my monsters right here, the Brave Package. It's a total of 13 monsters in this deck. Now, going off into the spells, you guys, we run a hefty spell lineup. This is the Tune deck, but we do need to see some of those spells, you guys. We got to get some spells off. So first things first, you got to start off with the best field spell in the game. Three, Tune Kingdom. Wow, this card right here, self-explanatory, you guys. Definitely need to see this card in order to get the Toon Lock going, which is pretty much their win condition. Toon Kingdom protects the Toons from being targeted. And if they're, if a Toon Monster gets destroyed, you could just banish one off the top of the deck to save them or to save them if they get destroyed, you guys, as long as Toon Kingdom's up on the field. Also, its name becomes Toon World while it's face up on the field as well. So you have no problem going off into all your Toon stuff. Definitely want to see Toon Kingdom at three, you guys. Next, The next three spells we're going to play, I play the one, Terraforming, to search out the Toon Kingdom, or to search out the Mystic Mine. And I play the Set Rotation, you guys. So uh, Terraforming and Set Rotation are at one for a good reason. The Set Rotation allows you to set, you could set one field spell on your side of the field and one on your opponent's side of the field. And as long as one remains set, you cannot reactivate a new field spell, both players. So sometimes you got to go into the Mystic Mine to get the Mystic Mine off. And then you give them a Toon Kingdom. So you keep your opponent locked down with the Mystic Mine. But then when the time comes, you just got to pop the Mystic Mine. You guys are pop their face down, set Toon Kingdom, and then you can keep going off with your plays. But most of the time when you activate that Mystic Mine, there's not really a way your opponent could get over it in these meta decks. They're having to go into the side deck in order to get over the Mystic Mine. So if you go into it during the first duel, usually you win the first duel. So definitely a good little package at three here. Set rotation is just broken too, you guys. And then Mystic Mine, man. Mystic Mine so prevalent in the meta today. It just shuts down everything. So I'm running it at one. So here we go off into the next spells. We run the three. Toon Table of Contents because you absolutely have to. This is the one the best searcher in the game. Um, you could just simply add one tune card from deck to hand. As long as it has tune in its name, this card is not once per turn. So if you open up with multiples, it's very, very good. And shout out to my boy Mark for blessing me with this TP6 Tune Table of Contents. I need two more, my dudes, but I'm working on it. I definitely want to max out this deck, you guys, but this is the first step right here, baby. I know it looks kind of off, but man, this TP6 one looks so good, but... You definitely want to run three Toon Table of Contents, you guys. That's a must. Then, for the second best searcher in all the game, and my second favorite card of all time, Toon Bookmark, you guys. Um, these collector rares look so nice, my dudes. But <laughs> this card right here, Toon Bookmark, has two very good effects. You could add any card that has Toon World in its text, so this allows you to get the Comic Hand. And also, its secondary effect is when it's in the graveyard, you could banish it to prevent the Toon Kingdom from being destroyed or from destruction, you guys. So if Toon Kingdom gets destroyed or gets targeted for destruction, you banish this to save it. Just like how Toon Kingdom saves the Toon Monster. So Toon Bookmark's very, very good. You need to run it at three. You want to see that comic hand, you guys. You want to be able to search it. Now, this is one that I cut down recently. I'm running just two Toon Page Flip. Now, this card right here, you don't want to see multiples of this in your opening hand. That's why I cut it down to two. Also, it's one of those cards that you actually want to search out yourself if you don't have it. You know, it doesn't come up too often because there ain't that many Toon Monsters in the game. I mean, in, there ain't too many Toon Monsters in this build. There's only eight, I believe. So, yeah, when you get the Toon Page Flip, you want to search it out yourself. It's a quick play spell. So, you can actually, actually activate it on your opponent's turn, which is really, really nice. And it's... 
Yeah, it's, it's a really good card to get one of your Toon Monster Special Summon to the field, ignoring its summoning conditions. And obviously, you always want to go for the Toon BLS, man, because he puts the most pressure on the board. But Toon Page Flip at two is a pretty good ratio for me. And also another two of for spells, I got two Comic Hands, you guys. Comic Hands, man, it's a uh, it's change of heart on crack. It's for the tunes. Um, it snatches up one of your opponent's monsters. Uh, and they could attack directly like a tune on that very first turn once it's snatched, you guys. So, man, Comic Hands, very nice. And now that it could be searched through tune bookmark, it's really, really good. And shout out to my boy Nick, hooking me up with this comic can right here this misprint appreciate that my dude has to go in the deck you guys two comic cans enough three is a little bit too much you start seeing it a little bit too much man and you don't really want to do that this is another card similar to tune page flip that you just want to search out and then be able to activate it like that whenever you need it so comic can that too it's been working really really good and then here we go to the to the uh, Brave slash Adventure stuff. We got the three, Rite of Armasir. Definitely gotta run this card at three. You wanna see that Adventure token. And, it, and then it's another 2K beater on the field. So it's very, very good. I decided to run the two Fateful Adventures in this build, you guys. Fateful Adventures really, really good at one, but sometimes your opponent could get over it with a Ghost Bell or with some other kind of hand trap, the Pop It or a Monster Effect. The second one just comes in clutch, you guys. Your opponent doesn't see that one coming. And then sometimes you actually open up Fateful Adventure too, you know, when you could do the whole thing with your, with the token, with Rite of Armistice where you could special the token and set the Fateful directly from deck to field. That's the route you want to take. Not only is it, not only is it good like that, like uh, maximizing your resources, but then it also deck thins too. So definitely want to run that at two. I run the one Draco back, but this is also another one that I've been contemplating on running too. It's very, very good. This is the card that works hand in hand with Illegal Knight because you could use Illegal Knight's effect, target two cards your opponent controls, switch possession, uh, bounce those two cards back. Then you activate Draco back's effect if you have the token already on your side of the field to bounce back the Illegal Knight back to your hand. And then bam, you could just use it again on your next turn. And if you hadn't special summoned that turn, the Illegal Knight from your hand or whatever, you could actually special summon them to your side of the field once you snatch them back just to put another 2k beater on your side of the field so very very good and then also the one foolish burial too i include this in the package because it all it does is dump the enchantress so you could go off with the package you guys so very very nice works really really well and then my last four spells you guys all draw power pretty much and run the three pot of extravagance um, this this build and this deck don't really care about special summoning monsters from the extra deck You can do it, but it's not really mandatory the tune lock is what really wins you the games But you know if you you always want to banish the six to draw the two you guys the more resources You could get from this deck the better off you're gonna be That's why I added this card right here at one triple tactics talent you guys Not only is your opponent gonna try to hit you with as many hand traps that they got so this is like a good little counter right here for, for any of your opponent's cards that, you know, the hand traps or whatever. Very, very good. It's been working phenomenally at one. I tried, a, I tried it at two. It was a little bit too much, you guys. So triple tactics at one. Just fine. So that's a total of 27 spells. And now, you guys, let's move on to the traps. So it started off with our first set of traps. We got the playset of evenly matched. This card right here actually took the place of like Lightning Storm. This card just so good, you guys. In this tune build, you really don't need the battle phase because most of those tune monsters, well, half of the tune monsters actually, they can't attack the first turn they're summoned. So that would be the Dark Magician and the Red Eyes. So you really don't need the battle phase too much. So evenly matched is perfect. It just banishes everything. It leaves your opponent with a hard choice. They gotta choose one to keep usually. And, um, you know, if, even if you don't, you pass up your battle phase and you get Tomb BLS to the field, you can still activate his effect to banish that last card that they have on the field if you could get that BLS to the field. So it's really, really nice, man. Evenly matched, a very good card. It's also one, you know, if you end up going first or whatever, you could always side this out, however you feel. It's very, very good, though, because this, this particular build wants to go second at first. 
So evenly matched is really, really good in the main. But just in case you have to go first, you guys, there's a little spice tech that I added into this deck. Last cards I'm running, I'm running the two Dogmatica Punishments, you guys. Now this card's really, really good. You could target one card, uh, one monster your opponent controls and you could send one extra deck monster with greater than or equal to attack from your extra deck to the graveyard and then you destroy that monster. And then um, if that monster you sent from the extra deck has an effect, that just goes off. So we'll talk about that more when we get to the extra deck, but punishment's very, very good at two. This is a going first card, but if you draw it, you know, going second, it's always just good to have set just in case your opponent could break your tune board, then you'll have something to at least punish them a little bit, pun intended. So, Dogmatica Punishment's very, very nice. The only restriction it has, though, is that you cannot use your extra deck until the end of the next turn, which really ain't no big deal for this tune deck, you guys. So, I definitely wanted to run this and to show you guys that it's really, really good, man. I've been playtesting it. Dogmatica Punishment comes in very, very clutch, man. So, at two. So, that rounds out the traps to five, and that brings the grand total of this deck to 45 cards, you guys. Not too bad for a tune deck. Now, that's it with the main. Let's go into the extra deck, baby. All right, you guys, now now we're going into the extra deck. So starting things off with the extra deck, you got to run the three Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. This is the one that comes up the most often and the one you're probably going to end up using the most is because uh, it's a rank seven. So most of the monsters you have in your deck are level sevens. You have the Toon Dark Magician, you have the Toon Red Eyes, you have the Griffin, and you have the Illegal Knight. They're all level seven. So going into this card, it's very, very good. If uh, you're close to beating your opponent, you overlay for Flare Metal Dragon. Every time your opponent activates an effect, right after it resolves, it burns them for 500, you guys. So very, very good card. That's why I max it out, because this is the one you're probably gonna go into the most. If you get your stuff banished off of Extravagance, then hopefully you still have one copy left where you could go into if you absolutely need it. Next one, next XYZ monster, I got another rank seven. I got the two, number 11, big eye. Now this one's pretty situational. It used to come up more often in previous formats, but this card right here allows you to target one monster your opponent controls and you take control of it. Big eye can attack the turn you use it, but it's just another way to get that pesky monster that your opponent has, get it over to your side of the field and you know kind of just hold it there to be honest kind of like a comic hand or something you could attack with it so big eye is really really good but it's not the best i run the one number 89 diablosis the mind hacker now the mind hacker is good because uh when he summoned you could look at your opponent's extra deck and you could banish one card from it by detaching the material from him and this card is just really really good nowadays that halky fibrax is at one because if you could get this card out before they summon the Halky Fibrax, you could banish the Halky Fibrax and it definitely puts a hurting on synchro type builds. Any, uh, any strategy that brings out tuners and that goes into synchro summoning, because that's almost like a lot of stuff in the format, you guys. And also you could get that crazy fusion monster maybe on the Despia players. Uh, man, just number 89 is pretty good utility, you guys. It comes up once in a while. I run it at one. I run the two, Divine Arsenal, Double A Zeus. Now this card's pretty good when like you're going into the Red Eyes, Flare Metal Dragon. Um, you know, if, you, uh, if they keep it on the field and you don't burn your opponent completely to life, you know, on your turn, you could attack with the Flare Metal and then you could just overlay for the Zeus. And you know, you guys know what Zeus does, man. Zeus just kills boards, it blows up boards. So just, I run it at two just in case if you banish one copy. You know, maybe you'll see it again. For the Dogmatica Punishment Package, I'm running the two Elder Entity Entis. This is probably the best card that you use for punishment, you guys, because not only does the punishment, uh, you target uh, the face-up monster your opponent controls, it'll destroy that monster, but if you send Entis, it'll allow you to pop something else on the field, a spell or trap or monster, you guys. So Entis is really, really good. I run the one Fossil Warrior Skull Knight. This card's really, really good. Um, you could send it with the punishment, and on your turn, you could banish it from the graveyard to target one monster your opponent controls and, and blow it up. So, pretty good. And the last one I run is the one win Pegasus at Ignister, because if your opponent happens to get over some stuff on your board, if any of your cards are destroyed by a card of your opponent's card effect, 
Um, and, and if this card is in your graveyard, you could banish it to target one card your opponent controls and shuffle it back into the deck. So it's a good little counter for your opponent if they're going in trying to break your board all crazy. So this is the little small package that I run, four cards for the punishments. And then the last three cards that I run in the build, I run the one barricade board blocker just in case uh, for some reason you only could get to one Toon Kingdom and they end up blowing it up. This is a way to get the Toon Kingdom back on the end phase if you link off into him. Uh, his effect is it lets you add a field spell during the end phase. So you want to definitely go into Barricade Borg if you need that. Just utility, you guys. If he gets banished off of the Extravagance, it ain't no big deal. But it's there just in case if you need it. And then the last two I run, I actually run two of the Dark, Dark Charmers. Now, um, this is a proxy, you guys. Sorry about that. I couldn't find the second Dark Charmer uh, before I started this profile. But Dark is really, really good in today's format, you guys. A lot of the boss monsters that these meta decks play are Dark monsters. And especially talking about Branded Despia, which is they have a whole extra deck full of Dark Fusion monsters. So if you happen to get over one of them, one of them's in the grave, you're going to go ahead and go into Dark. All you need is two monsters, including a dark monster, in which mo a lot of the monsters in this build are darks. Um, yeah, you go, into, you go into the dark charmer, you steal one of your opponent's monsters from the graveyard, a dark monster, you special summon it to your side of the field, and you let your opponent deal with it now. So dark's very, very good, man. I run him at two because same thing like extravagance. If it banishes one copy, then at least you'll have something to fall back on. So... That's pretty much it for my extra deck, you guys. Now let's go into the side. Let's see what we're working with. We're gonna start off with the back row destruction, you guys, because back row decks and floodgates do kill this deck. So I'm starting off with the one Harpy's Feather Duster. I run the three Mystical Space Typhoons, you guys. So there's four right there. You just, the MSTs are in here because I didn't feel like discarding anything with Twin Twisters and I didn't feel like paying life points anymore with Cosmic Cyclone. MST, the main reason why this is here is to stop that anti-spell fragrance, which a lot of duelists are gonna end up siding in. You really don't see it in the main deck, but once they side it in, go in game two, that's when you put these babies in there. And when they go to flip that mofo in the standby phase, you can go ahead and chain the MST and pop it. You guys won't have to deal with it, so. Those are, there's four right there, four spell back row destruction. And then I run two Regeki, you guys. Regeki's at three right now. If, uh, man, if the space was so tight in the side deck, I would probably run three, but two actually works pretty good. Um, if you open up with two, it's really, really good still, because if your opponent can negate one, they definitely ain't gonna negate the other one. So it's not once per turn, you guys. That's why Regeki's so freaking broken. But really, really good card in the side. Um, last spell I have in the side is the three Dark Ruler No More. Now this was actually one card that I was play testing in the main deck. It's really really good in the main deck, but you know, this is it's just if you with the main build with the main deck build that I have now, you usually could get past game one usually with the win. But if you if you can't. This is just extra firepower, you guys, just to stop your opponent. You know, if you want to go second, you know, in game two, game three, this could just shut down your opponent right here, one card. And then you just go ahead and go off with all your tune stuff, with your brave stuff, bounce stuff back, do whatever you got to do once the Dark Ruler No More is hit. But it's pretty good, you guys. This is one that I'm kind of contemplating on whether to take out or not. But as of now, it actually works pretty good, you know, when you side it in and you know you're going to be going second, so... Dark Ruler at three. And now all the rest are spell are uh, traps. Now starting off with the three, Summon Limits. You guys, now this is another card that I really contemplate on playing in the main, but I like to go second only because I like to draw the sixth card in the Toon deck. So this is if you're knowing you have to go first and you know your opponent's playing a deck where they're doing a lot of special summoning or normal summoning for all those flow players. Um, summon limit right here just puts a stop to it. They could summon two times per turn and that's about it, you guys. So it causes your opponent to have to play around this or have to get rid of this before they try to get rid of the Toon Kingdom. And uh, it's a very, very good card, man. It hurts a lot of decks in today's format. Definitely recommend this at three. 
And then my last three are, I run two, D Barrier. Just very, uh, just has a lot of utility. Actually like non-fusion area too. It's another good floodgate, but D Barrier, you could also hit Synchro. You could also hit XYZ, Pendulum. It's just, it's more dynamic. That's why I chose to go with D Barrier over any of those other ones. And then I also run the one Red Reboot, you guys, because Red Reboot, I guess is cause, uh, I guess this counts as back row destruction or back row hate, but red reboot, you guys, it is at one for a very, very good reason. You could activate this card from your hand by paying half your life points. So on your turn, you know, if you're going second and you open with this card and your opponent goes to hit you with some kind of trap, you could pay half your life points, negate it, man. And then they could set one and it, it just does the whole shebang where your opponent cannot activate trap cards for the rest of the turn. So man, it just eliminates all that headache, you guys, of trying to get past everything on your opponent's board rather than just one thing, which is Red Reboot. All you need to focus on is your opponent's monsters and then you can go ahead and beat for game. Or you activate this and you go into Harpy's Feather Duster and there's nothing your opponent could do to stop it. It'll just blow up everything on their, on their back row all over their field. So Red Reboot's very, very good at one, man. I love seeing this card when I sight it in. It's super nice. All right, my dudes, now that wraps up our updated Toon Deck profile, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm slowly trying to get this deck up to highest rarity standards, but man, there's so many expensive cards out there, you guys. I'm just, I'm slowly chipping away at it, slowly but surely. But I appreciate all your guys' comments, man, on wanting to find out what's going on with the Toon Deck. Best believe we are gonna have another updated Toon Deck profile within the next couple months. At the absolute latest, when the next ban list drops, we'll always be updating this deck profile for you guys. And you already know, it's my pleasure, man, to keep the tunes alive, you guys, because we ain't gonna stop until we get a high-ranking Toon Deck profile in the meta, you guys, and something that could just shut down all the meta, baby. Woo! The tunes are here to stay. But thank you guys so much for watching and joining me on this epic tune adventure. If you guys like what you've seen today, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, you guys. Keep the Meta Bros on your guys' screens. Let's break through that algorithm together. And if you guys ain't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel and join us on this epic YGO adventure and YGO journey through the metaverse you guys because we're all, you already know it's 2022 the meta bros are on to something huge but you guys this is what we love to do man this is why we do it every single moment that we can make a video and showcase anything with you Gio, you guys man it is our honor to share it with you guys man because this is what we love you guys we, we share that same love that you do and that's why you guys definitely have to subscribe to the super meta channel and if you already subscribed to the Super Metal channel, you guys, be sure to beat down that notification bell like there's no tomorrow to keep updated on everything that's Super Meta and join us through this epicness, man, that we call Yu-Gi-Oh, you guys, woo! And if you guys ain't already, be sure to check out our Instagram, you guys. We got Super Meta Bros. That's the Instagram account of the Super Meta Bros all together, but also check out my Instagram account, Meta Bro J2020. All the info is gonna be right here on the screen, you guys. Definitely follow us on those two platforms for everything Yu-Gi-Oh! and all the SoCal epicness, you guys. Woo! And that pretty much concludes today's video, you guys. My name's Meta Bro Jake. I'm signing out for the Super Meta Bros. I hope you all have a blessed day out there, you guys. Stay positive, stay focused, and stay strong, you guys. Nothing but love from the Super Meta Bros. Woo! See you guys on the next one, baby.